Hi, I'm David I, and welcome to this Rad Studio XE preview video. I'm here with Mike Roslog, product manager for Rad Studio. Hi, Mike. How you doing, David? I'm doing good. This preview showcases how you can work smarter, not harder, with an expanded developer toolbox. Rad Studio XE will let you streamline your development processes so you can spend less time managing and have more time for coding. That's true, David. Some of the new capabilities we have in the product today include things like build automation. We also have things in there for code assurance and quality. We also have things in for static analysis and performance profiling with memory and debugging capabilities and additional logging capabilities to help you do your job quicker and faster. So we've seen developers try to get more productivity and, and enhancements. What is it that we have in Red Studio XE for automation and augmentation of the build process? Well, interestingly enough, we now have Final Builder built into the product, and we also have a set of command line tools that will really help you automate your build process unattended. So we're really excited about that. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can do with that right now. What Final Builder will help you do is define, debug, maintain, run and schedule a repeatable build process and it does it so that you can extend it in a lot of ways. The first thing I'm going to do is come in and click the new project. When you click the new project it will come up into the actions. It creates a project with action list and you have the main and then you have on failure and you have a set of variables that you can set. We're going to come out to my current project and I'm going to click on the DPR file. I'm going to open that up and then I'm going to say load settings from project. When I do that, it's going to bring up a message saying that all settings will be overwritten. I'm going to go ahead and click yes. After that, I could go ahead and hit OK, but before I do that, let's look at some of the things that we can set up. There's a general with a comment section. There's a runtime features that we can set. We've already set up the project inside of here and which compiler version we want. We can also set our compiler settings, linker settings, our directories, version info, and also the resource compiler. Now I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and just to test this, I want to go ahead and run this. When I click on the Run tab down here, I can then click on the Run button, and it's going to kick off the run. Notice that we failed because we were missing a file. If I notice coming down here, I'm missing a file. So from that standpoint, I can now go back into the Actions, right mouse click on it, and go into Edit Actions. Since I know what the problem is, I can now go in and fix that problem. Now that I've modified the settings that I needed to inside of the project, I can now go ahead and click the OK button. Now when I go back to the Run, I can now go ahead and hit the Run button, and it will go out and compile my application, and you'll notice that we get the check mark. The next thing I want to do is go back to my Actions and add some additional actions. I want to go into Disk Management, and I'm going to get Disk Space. When I do that, it brings up a dialog, and I want to read that into a variable that I've already defined called space begin, and I'm going to say OK. Now notice I've created this new task, and I can move that task above. I'm then going to click on the compile, and I'm going to add a disk again, and this time I'm going to say space end. When I do space end, I can then say OK. Now I want to go back in and test this, so I'm going to go ahead and save it and I'm going to go back into my run. I'm going to hit the run button again and it will go out and recompile this. Notice that I can now come in and my disk space is listed and I can open this up and I'll see additional disk space and I can open up the disk space afterwards and see that it is different. There are a ton of new actions that you can do for your projects. That will give you a nice little introduction to what you can do with Final Builder that's now included with Rad Studio XE. One of the new features that we've added into Delphi to help with the build process is adding command line support for many of the tools. Things like generating audit reports, metrics, formatting your code, and even generating documentation. To do this, you need to go ahead and set up a couple of things. So let's go into our project that I have selected right here, and I'm going to click the project menu item and I'm going to go into QA metrics. This is where you can select the metrics that you would like to run on the project. The same can be said for audits. By clicking the project and coming into the QA audits, I have the same process. I can select the audits that I want. So when you're looking at the documentation generation, you need to go into the tools, 
and go into the options. When you go into the options, you'll notice that we have formatter, profiles, and status. This allows you to set and save different types of formatting rules for your particular project needs. Also, when you want to generate documentation, you can come in and set up all of your processes that you'd like to run. I have a build command line called Audit CLI, which allows me to build the audits and allows me to build the metrics. I have a formatter command that allows me to pull in my format configuration and then how I would like it processed. And then I have the doc generation, which allows me to generate the documentation for this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this outside of the environment. I could come in and type in for code. That's the command line that I created for formatting the code. Notice it went ahead and formatted the code. And when I come back into Rad Studio, it's going to ask me to update. Remember those lines of code down here that we modified. Now, when I go ahead and update, notice that my code is again formatted correctly. Where I can really take advantage of this is with Final Builder. Let's go out and take a look at what you can do with the Final Builder project. So here I have a Final Builder project that I've extended that we did in the first example. I get my disk space. After that, I want to format the code to make sure that it's always correct. I then want to run my audits because remember, the audits can be run on code that does not compile. I want to then compile it. I want to build my metrics after it's compiled. And then I want to generate my documentation and then finish. Let's go ahead and run this build configuration and see how it works. I'm going to click the Run button. And as you can see, each one of the items is going through and running. Now, if I come into my build log, you can see that I can come out and look at all of the command line processes that have happened during that. Now, I can exit out of here. And now, let's go ahead and pull up one of the HTML files that was created. This is the metrics. And notice that I can see all of my metrics that were generated. I can come out and click on each one of these with a link. I can come to the top where the name is at and find out what each one of these items represent. So if I wanted to see the number of lines in code, I could go ahead and look at lines of code. This makes developing and generating standard build processes a breeze now that we've added command line support into Delphi XE. Great demo of the build automation and command line tools, Mike. What do we have in Red Studio XE that will help me build high quality applications? Well, in Rad Studio XE right now, we do have the integration of AQ Time, which is a performance profiler, which will help us isolate performance issues. We also have built in Ray's code site, which will allow us to do advanced logging and debugging, which will allow us to be able to find bugs faster than we ever have before. Let me give you a quick example of how you can use those tools. One of the really great tools that we've added to Rad Studio XE is AQ Time from SmartBear. This is one of the best profilers on the market, and it has a lot of functionality that's been added into the product. Let me give you a quick example of a performance application. This application is a simple application that basically calls a bunch of functions and then calls some more functions from those functions. And it's trying to show you where the performance is located inside of the application. To run profiling, you basically come to the profiling menu and you go to Current Profiler. As you can see, there's a lot of profilers included with AQ Time. Since this is the standard edition, not all of the profilers are enabled. However, the Performance Profiler is enabled, so let's go ahead and run this application with the Performance Profiler. And you notice it comes up with the Run Settings, and what we want to do is we want to profile from the root routine. We want to then go ahead and show all the performance settings, and we're going to go ahead and click the Run button. This will kick off the application, and it's going to ask us what kind of interaction we want to have for uninstrumented routines. So we're going to leave this as default. The next thing it's going to ask us is this is the application, and how many times do we want to do the recursive calls, and 10 should be fine. Once this is complete, we can go ahead and close it, and when we close it, that's when the report will be generated. Notice that we have 
do action B, do action A, and do action C. Do action A was called 11 times, do action B was called 101 times, and do action C was called 10 times. We can also figure out which method took the longest just by simply clicking on the time method. We can also see which one had the highest hit count by clicking on the hit count. Now what's important to remember is that for the length of time and the number of hits, how much time did it actually take with its children being called? And as you can see, do C took up a significant amount of time because it actually had children involved with it. So now to do the final analysis on this, we can now drill into do action A. When we double click on that, it will take us into the source code. Notice now inside of the source code that we have action A, sleep 500. What's interesting is we can come over here and put our cursor and it will show us exactly what's going on. It will tell us the time with the children. It will also show us the number of times it was executed and give us additional information. With AQ Time Standard Edition integrated into RAD Studio XE, profiling your applications will become simpler, you'll find more bugs quicker, and you'll be able to produce better code faster. This is a really exciting addition to the product. Another new feature we have in RAD Studio XE is Ray's Software Code Site. This gives us advanced logging capability. There are times when debugging and running your application does not give enough information, so having integrated logging is the key. The way you integrate code site into your application is pretty straightforward. The first thing you have to do is add the code site logging unit into your application. As you can see, we have a simple application up and running. And the next thing I want to do is on the form when I show it, I want to actually show that we are coming into the application. So I'm going to go to the on show method, type in code site, send a message, hello from, and then I'm going to call the form caption, run the application. You'll notice that the code site live viewer comes up and shows me that I've already had hello from my membership editor. Go ahead and exit out of there. Now let's go ahead and add a little bit more with the logging. So as you can see I have an add members button and I want to add logging to that event. So I'm going to double click on my add member. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set up a line called code site send button one self. So that should send the form to the logging structure. So I'm now going to run. And when we run the product you'll notice that it comes up. There's my hello membership that I added in the show method. I'm now going to come back into my application and I'm going to add a new item. And notice that my code site comes up with a button one click. And I have a little item beside here which represents an object. And you notice here's all of my properties for the form. So I see all of the insight of what's going on inside of that form very quickly. The next thing I want to do is come in and add another line of code into my event. And I'm just going to call this one code site and we're going to do an exit method and we will just say leaving button one click. Now when I run it, you'll notice that the code site comes up. I can put my name into here and say Mike and we'll add a member. And then when I exit, you notice that we have a leaving button one click. I also have the object with all of its properties. So this gives me a lot of great information about the application. Let me bring up C++ Builder. I have the exact same application that we were working here. And I'm going to go into C++ Builder and notice we have our code site exit method here. And I've already added the logging into here. And I'm going to go ahead and run it. And when we run this process, you'll notice that there's the button one click right there. So it works the exact same way in C++ works the same way in Delphi and it works the same way in Delphi Prism. So I'm really excited about having this logging capability for RAD Studio XE. In this preview video we showcased RAD Studio XE's expanded developer toolbox with build automation, new command line tools, performance profiling, and logging. Thanks Mike. You're welcome and remember with RAD Studio it's all about working smarter not harder.